Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to BNB Anime. I am Blue. Hi, I'm Brad. Wait, I'm early. <laughs> wow. Wow. Aggressive. An aggressive start to today's podcast. <laughs> How are you doing? Why are you so aggressive? What's going on with you? <laughs> Sorry, I missed my cue. So somebody was off to the side waving like, hey, hey, it's... It's time to, or I thought they might have been needing help. I don't know. I was just like, I just, I'm in. I'm in. I'm here. <laughs> Hello. It's like that joke. Um, knock, knock. Who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow. I, I knew where it was going. I knew what was coming. And yet, <laughs> and yet I still went for it anyway. That's why there was a pause. I was like, uh, you know what? I'm game. <laughs> It's such a stupid joke, but it makes me laugh all the time. Uh, it's so stupid. Yes, I am real boy. Do you want to go skateboards? What? Have, have you never seen any of the ass deaf movies? Oh, yeah. Uh, not that. That doesn't ring a bell, though. It's the cow that likes to skateboard. That's like a skateboard. like. Oh, yeah. You just brought back a memory from the depths of my brain. <laughs> Yes, I am real boy. Do you want to go skateboards? I like trains. <laughs> <laughs> I like turtles. I like turtles. But yeah, on today on the podcast, we are going to be discussing Kids on the Slope. But before we get into Kids on the Slope, which is one of my favorite animes of all time, I would say it is my absolute favorite anime of all time because I have yet to decide my absolute favorite anime of all time. But this one is one that I absolutely enjoy very, very much. So yeah, I hope that you guys will stick around to hear us discuss this. But before we get into that, Braddle Doodle Dandy, how you been? I've been good. I've been absolutely exhausted. I decided to go way too hard on the tennis court on Tuesday mm. and play eight full sets. Why? Don't don't even bother asking why He's because I to be can't even Sanriana. answer that myself. That's why. At trying and failing miserably because Walker still absolutely handed me my ass on a gold platter, not even a silver platter, a gold platter. Nice. He beat me six games to two in the first set, and then the second set I did a little bit better, and he beat me six games to three. Nice. But in other news, I won every other set that I played that night, so ding! Ding! <laughs> nice. But how about you? How you been? I've been alright. I've been working on a absolutely mahoosive painting for a long time, and it's taking uh, a lot of my brain power to do that. Didn't think... I tend to do paintings on quite a small scale, and uh, yeah, got this giant canvas, had a go at it, been having a go at it, and it's a lot of fun. I'm having a great time, but it is taking many, many, many hours of sitting on the floor with a bad back. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's been really good though. I've really been enjoying it. And yeah, the house is painted now, fully painted. Looks good. What else? What else? Oh, I'm possibly thinking about in the future, maybe going to art school. That's exciting. I saw yeah. where you were talking about that. I wish you all the best. Should you Thank choose you. to go down that path, you are definitely trying to fulfill your anime MC. <laughs> Storyline? Yes, Trope? I am. See, this is Bloodline? the thing. I only know of one anime that is based around art, and I don't, I don't know any other animes that's like, oh yeah, it's an art anime. Like, they go to school and they're like a painter. I feel like I've seen an anime about this, and yet I can't remember. Yeah, so if you guys know of any animes that are about art, or feature art, because, like, Kids on the Slope has a painter in it. Like, one of the characters is a, is a painter. And there's, like, a couple other animes where there's, like, they go to an art school and there's, like, a musician and then there's a, I don't know, somebody else, a dancer and a singer and, you know, that kind of stuff. And then one of the characters happens to be an artist. But I don't know of any that strictly feature art. So if you do know of any, or any manga, let me know. Because I, I do art. I do the art. I'm looking at doing the art school. <laughs> You know, maybe one day when I manage to actually grow purple hair out of my scalp, I will officially be anime MC character of my dreams. You got this. I believe in you. If anybody can do it, it would be you. <laughs> you have the most potential out of all of us. So I'm putting Aww. all of my faith, hope, and stock in you. No, put some of yourself in yourself. 
put yourself in yourself. That's came out exactly the way that I wanted it to. You wanna you wanna try again? No, I'm gonna leave it there. We're gonna sit on that awkwardness and swiftly move on. So I know one thing that you haven't done this week that you have missed out on. What did I do? You've missed out on our stream communities and myself playing Among Us. Yeah, I did. I did. Although I... then th then again, we did nonchalantly not invite you because it was on Sunday and I knew you'd be busy and I didn't want to bother you. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like I'm I'm so glad that you like you guys all had a, a good time and yes sunday is my day where i hibernate so um <laughs> i i appreciate the hibernation um what did i do on sunday i don't know mate uh did we even speak I don't on think sunday so. i don't think so i think i tend to hide away from the entire world on sundays like i don't tend to talk to anybody or go on social media or the internet or anything i think i just read a book like all Sunday. Sunday. What is, is this my... reading you speak of? What is reading? I love to read so much. So, did you finish reading Fuka? No, because I'm a butthead that forgot. How did I forget? Oh my god! Sometimes my ADHD is. I swear, I'm gonna blame it on my ADHD. But we, I, I don't know if it is or if I just have a freaking hole in my head. Well, I, I do. You have several. That's how heads function. How you breathe and stuff. <clears throat> um. I meant like a brain leaking out of the back of my head kind of hole, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm so mad! How did I forget that, though? Do I need to do I need to just text you at some point and remind you at some point to like, hey, you should finish this? I appreciate it if you do that, but also I know how I forgot. My tablet ran out of charge. Then you put it on a charger. Yeah, but then I forget that it exists. <laughs> did you know that people with ADHD have this weird thing where when you put something out of sight, we forget it exists. Is it like <clears throat> now my now my brain has just died. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I have think that's why like I don't have any cupboards or drawers around like in my studio or anything. Because if I put something in there, it doesn't it no longer is a thing. <laughs> so what day would you like for me to set a reminder to get you to read Fuka? I I don't uh <laughs> Sunday? Your hibernation day? Uh, sure, that works. We can do it on Sunday. Uh-huh. Hey Siri, set a reminder for me to tell Blue to finish reading Fuka on Sunday. Done. Thank you. <laughs> reminder has been set. Reminder for Blue to stop being an idiot. Set on Sunday. Would I not need to set that every day? Rude. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. You're obviously the brains of this operation. Uh, I'm the brawn. Uh... Uh, yeah. Actually, well, no. Considering how much or how many notes you take for the podcast, you probably are the brawn of this as yes, well. I have the, the fuck. Am I here for? You? Why do you keep me around? No, Please you're... enlighten me. <laughs> you're the brains. I'm the typographer. <laughs> I'm a typographer. So you're the secretary. Yeah. And I am the desk clerk. So who's running this operation? I don't fucking know. Prickles? Prickles. Damn it, Prickles. Damn it, Prickles. <laughs> it been embezzling from the company all this time. Yeah, I was gonna say, she doesn't pay us enough. We've been doing this for free. She definitely doesn't pay us enough. She's getting all the profits. How dare she? I mean, she is a little prick, so, you know. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> Cacti saw what you did there. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm big brain. <laughs> So, are you ready to get into what little bit of news I don't have this week? Okay, sure. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> so, the third Fate Stay Night film. Here's the whole title. Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel. The third one earns 1.7 billion yen for the trilogy's highest box office. What? Since it opened on August 15th, it has sold over 1 million tickets. That's really good considering the covid situation right okay carrying on <laughs> oh i can do this weird thing with my throat and make it sound like either a frog or a pig i still haven't decided okay let me hear it both <laughs> it's a frog pig <laughs> it's a frog pig frog pig <laughs> it's a prig or a frog no that doesn't work frig. <laughs> it's a frig or a prog yeah a frig or a prog <laughs> <laughs> they both it's ended G, so it's hard. Or a frog. 
wait. <laughs> well, because I I'm took the front that. That's of... getting posted everywhere. <laughs> I took the front of frog and the G from pig, and I just ended up with a frog. You, you know what? C for effort. C. <laughs> See what I did there? Grazie. Can we cover the Lego movie on this? Is the Lego movie anime? Okay, hear me out on this logic. Okay. <laughs> Ninja Batman is technically considered an anime film. Okay. The Lego movie uh -huh. has Batman. Okay. This so, is where you're going. <laughs> therefore. <laughs> Any movie with Batman in is now classified as anime. Yes. I don't think. That's how that works. <laughs> but Nate! But does that mean that, like, when you're just, like, walking through, like, all of those Batman in, like, Times Square and stuff, are they just cosplaying? The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Oh, my God. Okay, I have to tell you this thing that's so embarrassing that happened to me earlier this... Last week? This week? I don't know. It happened to me at some point. It's so embarrassing because it's, it's a full ADHD moment. Because I have, like, the first half of conversations in my head and then forget to give context. Uh -huh. And that's what happened this time. Um, so I was in an art supply store and I was going through checkout. And the girl who was, I think, probably a high schooler who was checking me out, she checking out my stuff. She wasn't checking me out. <laughs> I'm glad you clarified because the shit giving was about to begin. <laughs> Uh, no, checking this stuff out. She was a cashier. She was wearing these earrings that looked like a bunch of tiny earrings all combined together. And so it looked like she had multiple ear piercings, but she didn't. They were just, I assume, just one ear piercing, maybe two. And then it looked like she was wearing a bunch of different, different earrings all at once. They were cool. And I saw them and I noticed them. And in my brain, I thought, those are really cool earrings. That reminds me of a thing. But in, out loud, I just said randomly to this random cashier who was checking out my art supply stuff. I had a dream that I had 27 ear piercings. And then she was so confused. I couldn't recover from that. So, so I just grabbed my stuff and left. And poor girl is probably thinking about it, being like, what? The heck it just happened. Ugh, so cringe. Why did I do that? I don't know. But that's a great story. It's not. It's such a... Oh, God. It's so bad. Why do... See, this is why I can't handle cringe stuff in animes, because my life is cringy enough, because I don't understand how to be, like, socially normal. I'm just... Uh, why did I not give any context to that statement at all just randomly could you imagine if you're just like at dunkin donuts getting your coffee and the person who's giving you your coffee just goes i had a dream that i had 27 ear piercings and then just had to do your coffee and leaves like how <laughs> but at that point would you not try to make it even more awkward by going same and then slamming the window shut <laughs> uh, i just want to let you guys know at home if you are as awkward as I am, please laugh with me at this. Because <laughs> if you don't, I'm just going to be left to be at all awkward by myself. And know that, yeah, okay, you can't do much that's, that's, uh. So in yeah. the coming days, be on the lookout for an audio clip of Blue telling this story to be plastered everywhere. No! Oh, God. Just, I want, like, a t-shirt now that just says, I had a dream. That I had 27 ear piercings. Can we just get a t-shirt that's going to be black and in a shiny gold font that just says 27 piercings? 27 piercings. Why is that a good name for a band? I mean, honestly, though. And their first three albums <laughs> should be nine songs long. And they're just each labeled one, two, three, four. <laughs> and then they retire after the third album. After the third album, that's it. Like, once they get to song number 27, that's it. And then they can release a new record. And then they, they change can their name. 28 to... piercings. They, they change their brand name to 27 Tattoos. <laughs> it starts all over again. <laughs> that would be great. I did have a dream, though, that I had like 27 ear piercings. Uh huh, sure. Yeah, and it was the night before I woke up that morning and I was like, what the, the what the, what the weird dream and what, what in the weird dream? Uh huh. Yeah. 
I kind of want to go get another ear piercing now, though. David, don't let your dreams be dreams. <laughs> go get an ear piercing. <laughs> <laughs> to be precise, 27 ear piercings. 27 would be too many. Nah. I've already got four on one ear and two on the other. So, six down, 21 to go. I don't think I have enough room on my ears. That sounds like quitter talk. That sounds like I don't have big enough ears. Again, that's the sound of a quitter. How many ear piercings do you have? Exactly. Not, not 27. <laughs> but also, that's not my dream. That's your dream. I'm encouraging yeah, but it was you to dream, reach your full not... potential. <laughs> uh... I'm trying to be a good, helpful, supportive friend. And you're, you're just shooting me down. Shred my ears. No, you. it was your dream. Yeah, but <laughs> sometimes dreams are bad. Anyways, is that all the news? <laughs> What kind of person do you take me for coming in here with just two pieces of news? Of course it's not all the news. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> for the last piece of news, because I Okay, was... so there's only one piece left. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I inconveniencing you with my news? <laughs> we can go straight into the topic and I can talk terribly about it. No. Don't be mean. We're about to have another repeat of, what was that one? Dive? Was that it? I don't know. I'm just Brad kidding. Brad doesn't, Brad can deduct points because he doesn't like me. Yes, I don't like the person that I <laughs> record with and speak to every single day. Yeah, you don't like me anymore. Ever since I got 27 ear piercings, you've just treated me different. You haven't gotten 27 ear piercings <laughs> yet. <laughs> now get 27 ear piercings and then we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, news. Let's go. Let's progress. We can do this. Speaking of progress. So, um, as you I, all know. <laughs> sorry. It's just speaking of. <clears throat> oh, you leave it there. <laughs> so and that is my formal opinion on the matter <laughs> i can't with you today <laughs> so yeah as we're all aware no i'm not obviously because you don't watch stuff week to week no i don't with the changings of the anime seasons mm -hmm. some shows begin some shows continue, and other shows end. With this episode, we have officially reached the end of Food Wars. <gasps> now, with endings, we have new beginnings. And with new beginnings, I am beyond excited to announce that Sword Art Online, the progressive novels, are officially licensed to have an anime made. Ooh, okay. I know that I've discussed the progressive novels with you before. It mm -hmm. is SAO, but the volumes are floor by floor, so I'm so excited. It's SAO how it should have been told. How it not, should have been. Not floor 1, floor 23, floor 50, floor 51, floor 74, and then floor 75. No, it's floor by floor by floor. Nice. I cannot be more excited, and depending on how closely they stick with the source material... And how the source material is going to progress, there should technically be enough material for over 200 episodes of Progressive. Wow. That's exciting. If they actually branch out and go that route. Yeah. I sincerely hope they do. Because I'm, I'm well, such a Progressive nerd. If they do that, isn't that going to make Sword Art Online one of the biggest anime franchises, like, continue, like anime stories in That's going to be, yeah, it's going to be one of the longest running anime of all time. Yeah. Because it's going to be up there with Bleach, Fairy Tail, Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Now, granted, SAO is a very mainstream anime and it catches a lot of slack for what it is. Mm -hmm. However, this with Progressive, it's essentially a hard reboot of the franchise, or at least mm -hmm. SAO 1. And then yeah. they can do whatever they want to after the fact. However, actually having a hard reboot of the entire Aincrad arc and actually having relationships be filled out, figure out why Kirito and Asuna have this love-tate relationship that kind of progresses throughout it until they end up falling in love. And also, we can finally have SAO without the harem. Yeah. 
Yeah, I hope they take this as an opportunity to really correct all of the things that the fandom had the biggest issues with in the first place. I hope that the people that are huge fans of Soda Online, like yourself, are pleased with with the outcome of this. And I hope they I really do hope that they listen to what to what the fandom has said and take it on as constructive criticism because I do know that it is so disappointing when you're watching something and you go through like a season of it and you love it or you read the manga and you think it's amazing and then it progresses and it just absolutely disappoints you. I feel like this is a good opportunity for a lot of people that have been completely dissuaded from Soda Online to give it another chance, and I I hope that you're not disappointed. Well, I've been reading the progressive manga as it has been coming out, and it has been an absolute joy to actually be able to sit down and read, because it's a really refreshing take on what SAO was throughout its Mm -hmm. first season. Mm -hmm. And then with the... With SAO3 or the whole Alicization arc, they really did listen to the fans and get rid of the harem aspects and just really focus on the story and Kirito and Asuna's relationship and just building a world that is actually, it makes you care about the characters in it, not just the main character. Mm -hmm. So as long as they stick with the manga this time and actually follow the story that Reki has laid out with it and not try to take their own liberties with it, Progressive is set to be the best SAO has ever been. Mm -hmm. So high hopes, very high hopes. Yeah. Because as of this coming weekend as well, SAO will officially be over. Mm-hmm. because it is going to be the very last episode of the Kirito arc. Yeah. So lots of exciting things coming. Also sad to see a lot of things go. One last piece of news that just kind of hit my brain. Mm-hmm. Attack on Titans final season has been delayed. Yeah. Because it was originally supposed to start next week in October mm-hmm. and has officially been delayed until December. Yeah, I, I'm... Mostly pleased with everything that has been delayed. I think that I would, I know for myself, I would much rather a studio takes those extra few months to figure out how best they want to make it or if they're making it slower than they would if they were able to be in their studios all the time. Everything that they need to do, A, for everyone's safety, but B, I think we're going to get a better product by just giving them that extra amount of time that they need to delay the release so i know i mean i know that in like april it was really upsetting when everything got pushed back but now i think we're all kind of more used to things getting delayed and i think it's it's a good thing when they get delayed if we get a good product out of the delay but it's a really weird time frame on the delay because it didn't get delayed till winter yeah, 100%, it got delayed until the end of fall like the last yeah. month of the fall anime season so why but, not push it back until January? Why wait until the last week uh, or the last month of the year to it, do that? In my mind, it's kind of good marketing because it's not going to be up against a lot of other competition for release, is it? It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be all launching on the same week with everything else. And so you have to rank what you want to watch first because everything else is going to be kind of in the middle of what they're doing or wrapping up what they're doing. And and they'll, they'll kind of be able to have more of a, a solo release. So I think there's going to be a lot more press around it than there would necessarily be if they left it to January. I mean, that is true. However, you're going to be starting your show off hot for about four weeks. Hmm. And then as the final season is going to finally start trying to ramp up, you're literally competing against one of the most stacked anime seasons upcoming because january is absolutely stacked but at least then people would already be hooked rather than them trying to launch in january when it is already stacked and they might not even get people in the first week to give them the opportunity but with it being attack on titans final season though you would think the people that are already going to be watching it are the ones who are have already seen the show so they know what they're getting into I don't know, though, because a lot of people have stopped watching Attack on Titans. I know there are quite a few people that have dropped it, but I feel like if they have the best chance of getting those people back that have dropped it, to do it in the off-season rather than to do it on the on-season. Because I I feel like their numbers have been dropping. It has, but a lot of that has to do with the liberties that they've taken from the manga throughout the second season. Mm -hmm. The third season, they try to rectify that a little bit, however... With the increase in animation budget and everything else that they got and trying to rectify the storyline, 
what they kind of lacked on was that they decided to pick it up in the most political arc of the show Mm -hmm. or in the manga to where it's like, okay, here's this story of, you know, this show that's all about flying through cities and destroying titans oh wait let's be political and not focus on that so much let's focus on all the other shit within the government and corruption and all this other stuff Mm -hmm. so it's i get what they tried to do with it and everything that was going on but they kind of picked a really odd arc to try to bring it back on Mm -hmm. But the animation budget was phenomenal. Good on them for getting that animation budget increase. Mm -hmm. And it's been awesome to see that studio that started off as such a small studio with the first season to where it took them years to even make a second season go to where they're cranking out the way that they are, being able to increase the animation as much as they did and move to the point to where they are now. Mm -hmm. But still, I just felt it was kind of an odd move to... Do that. If they had to do it for COVID reasons, by all means, I totally understand that if that's what's best for them, then I say go for it. However, Mm -hmm. if it was for any other reason, I, in my opinion, I think it would be silly because then you're, like I said, as the series is going to be really ramping up, you're facing a season that has a lot of returns that people have been absolutely dying for. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested to... I can fucking speak. I'm interested to see how the rankings and everything turn out for both the fall 2020 season and winter 2021 kind of stack up. Yeah. Because, again, with January, you have the rest of ReZero Season 2. You have the Promised Neverland Season 2. You have Dr. Stone Season 2. There's so much stuff that's going to be starting back up that people have been absolutely dying for. Yeah. To where it's just a really odd place for it to be. Like, if it were my decision, I would have at least pushed it back to January to where it at least would have ran alongside everything. I feel like it could have gotten kind of swept under the rug, though, if you'd done that. I don't think so, with it being the name that it is. I understand that. I just don't think that... Like, I mean, yeah, okay, it definitely has its name and its reputation to be able to, like, put it on, but I feel like doing it in the off-season gives it its own special highlight that it wouldn't get otherwise, because by the time, like you said, it's going to be ramped up when everything else is launching, people are going to be hooked on that show, and so they're going to already want, oh my god, the next episode is coming out, as a, and they're going to want to watch that first, as opposed to, because they've already seen the previous stuff. As opposed to starting on a new thing, even if it is a new season, because they've had a break between the last season and that season, I feel like it's a fairly decent move to pitch yourself against such a stacked January season. I feel like it's good marketing, in my opinion. Unless you're dealing with me, who literally cares about nothing from this point on, except for ReZero Season 2. Yeah. Because... I I can't wait for next week. Mm-hmm. Like, I uh, talked about it last week, the week before. I can't fucking remember. Everything is running together at this point as far as what you and I have discussed. Yeah. <clears throat> but next week's episode, I have been looking forward to for ages. Mm-hmm. Because I've gotten absolutely zero feedback from you on this show. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm, I finally get to hear what you think. I you finally, finally have somebody that I can verbally speak with about it. Because my God, this last episode, I swear, if we don't get one more next week before we record, because we record on Wednesdays and that's whenever the new episode drops. If we don't fucking get one more episode, I'm going to be livid. So sad. We'd better get it. Oh my God, we better get it. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> everything i'm okay <laughs> but yeah that's that's news that's it for news that is it for news all right well i guess we will jump into discussing kids on the slope like i said before this is uh, one of my favorite animes of all time brad uh used to be a big fan but apparently this time he's not as much of a big fan anymore and that's kind of sad but we will get into discussing that properly in brad's opinion later on Before we get into that, though, Brad, have you done any background research on Kids on the Slope? Me? Actually do my job? Who do you think I am? What do you take me for? Uh, Brad? You right. (laughs) (laughs) So, I decided to be an absolute jerk to Blue this week in my background research because I found out 
that as with most anime, although I noticed that Blue hadn't really given it much thought after I sent her what I did, but Kids on the Slope was based off of a manga. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought, right? Right. Well, as is with most manga, and especially with the mood that I've been in here recently, I decided to do a little bit of research and see if I could find said manga. Come to find out, it has 10 volumes that had its original run from September 28th of 2007 through July 28th of 2012. That's not the biggest part about this. The biggest part is, is that I sent it to Blue he and did. made her really want it. Yeah. Uh, see, I, uh, funnily enough, it just never occurred to me to look for a manga for this. Obviously, I, I did know that there was a manga that was associated with this. Because the Kids on the Slope is only 12 episodes, only one season. There's never going to be any more. It's wrapped up and done in the one season, um, in the one core of the one season. And I really like it as it is. And it's kind of a nice ending to the story. And so I was satisfied <laughs> with it. Um, so it genuinely never occurred to me to read the manga, especially because it is a music anime. And as we're discussing in music month. And so I felt, I don't know, I guess I just didn't really connect with reading about it when I could watch it and hear all the music. But then when Brad said that there were, what, 10 volumes? 10 volumes. Yeah. Uh, I realized that there maybe is a, a little bit more content. <laughs> just Because just typically a bit more content. the way anime is laid out is that a episode will usually be composed of about three chapters of manga. Yeah. Two to three, give or take, depending on how strictly it follows the manga and how much information they can pack into an episode. Mm -hmm. But let's just say three episode rule. A yeah. volume of manga typically has eight to nine chapters. So a volume is essentially about three episodes. Yeah. If it followed the pattern that it did with 12 episodes, that would be four volumes. Yeah. So if, depending, I have no clue how far... Or how closely the show followed the manga. I would honestly love to read the manga for this just to see how yeah, just to see how different it is and how much more story we didn't get. Because if depending on how closely they followed it, there could be another season of this plus a film. Yeah, honestly, like because of the way that the anime ended, don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil anything. Because of the way that the anime ended, it leaves you with this hopeful they're gonna keep going feeling i don't think that's a spoiler and uh it's music month we haven't covered anything sad this isn't your lie in april so <laughs> everybody knows happy ending there has happy to be ending. happy ending because yeah. if not we chose a really piss poor anime to be going into horror month with honestly yeah but yeah so it leaves it leaves you with this hopeful feeling at the end of the anime. Mm -hmm. And I would genuinely love to see what happens after that, of our two main characters past what they went through with the time having gone. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to word this in a way where I'm not spoiling anything. Um, I Yeah, so then I would want to see them the way that they are, how they interact what they do if they play together again. Because I don't think that having... I don't think that they would not be able to play. I think they'd have to play jazz. They play jazz together. That's what they do. They play. I don't know. I want to see more. But I also don't. I'm also satisfied. You see, you say that, and watching it through this time, I definitely wasn't satisfied with how Aww. it ended. Because, again, watching it through this time... And I feel like I'm being more harsh on it, because as is what we do here, we, we now go through everything them. and critique it. Mm -hmm. Or we at least give our thoughts on it, which in and of its own right is critiquing it, depending on how you want to look at it. Yeah, I was going to say, we're not critics, we're just two loons, but, you know, we are yeah, we, effectively we critiquing are people it by that definition. Have very vastly different opinions on anime, although we have very similar opinions as well. You and I are both in a very vastly different genre of anime, so therefore yeah. we are the true anime yin and yang to one another whenever it comes to certain genres. Yeah, I think so. And it's not that I didn't enjoy this anime by any means. I still did, and it still choked me up at a certain point. We'll get to that later. Mm -hmm. But I definitely felt watching it through this time that there was for one a lot more cringe yeah there there are some cringy moments in there but nothing that i 
couldn't i mean i did skip a couple of bits but that's only because i'd seen them before which it is nothing new for you although no, there is a not. certain point in like episode two or three i can't remember which one it was specifically but i just had to cut it off i was like i'm done i'm taking a break <laughs> taking a break i'm walking away yeah because it's you and i both have the ability to like fill other people's cringe mm-hmm. that was me at that moment because yeah, i've been like in cringe. situations like that to where i'm just like uh j- j- I'm out. Yeah, I definitely think that the characters in this anime are, it spans over three years and throughout their high school time. And you can definitely tell how juvenile they are and how young they are, but also they've all been through, or our two main characters have been through so much to the point where they don't really know how to interact with with other people socially very well. And that is consistent throughout the anime. And because of that, There are moments where you are watching it and you are angry at them or frustrated with them as characters because they're not behaving the way that they should. And that is very frustrating to watch and it's not always a satisfying feeling, but it's actually one of the reasons why I really love this anime because I relate to it. Because like earlier I was talking about, I have really awkward social moments where I don't really know how to interact with other people or I don't say things the way that I want to say things or, you know, I have those moments frequently. They're a frequent thing for me. So I found these characters super relatable in that sense that sometimes you want something to come across in a certain way and it just doesn't. And you don't know what to do with your emotions. You get really overwhelmed. And so I find these characters really relatable. But I also can absolutely see how, to a lot of people, they would just be cringy and frustrating and annoying because they're not, they're not perfect people. They're not, they're not nice all the time. They're not nice people all the time. And I don't know. I guess for me, it's not that I find it so cringy with the fact that I can't continue watching it. It's just, it's, I don't enjoy it. Do we have any more background information on him? The anime had its original run from April 12th of 2012 through June 28th of 2012 for a total of 12 episodes. The show Mm -hmm. was directed by Shin Ichiro Watanabe, Mm -hmm. whose other works consist of Cowboy Bebop, Mm -hmm. Carol and Tuesday, and that's it. So some legendary stuff there legendary oldies and a really good new one Mm. because carolyn tuesday has taken the world by storm for it being a netflix original absolutely i lost my notes come back baby come back baby come back you can blame it all on me and why did you have to do that to me (laughs) I was in a I was in a thought process and you said that and then my brain just you'll when you're editing this you will you'll you'll laugh at my ADHD then you will die at that because I was literally in the middle of the, of a sentence and you did that and my brain just ADHD <laughs> so hard like so bad. Do you, again? Do you ever think that I just do shit on purpose? That's not very nice. <laughs> Now, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That that was not my intentions whatsoever. No, you know then, how my brain works. You know that I can't help it. Do you also understand why I want you to play Among Us as well? Yeah. Because, again, the fact that I know how your brain works makes it extremely dangerous to play a game where you have to lie and be deceitful. <laughs> yeah. But I also have been in theater since I was four years old. From the age of four to 16, 12 years worth of acting. But if, okay, so funny story going to Among Us from this past Sunday. I'm probably going to edit this out. I'm just telling you this for shits and giggles because I figure you'll get a kick out of it. <laughs> so Dakota was the imposter and me, Tyree, and Dakota were kind of run, running around together. I can speak. And so Tyree split off from us and Dakota killed me. And so Dakota ran off to go be with Tyree and somebody found my body. And so, uh, no, it wasn't me. It was somebody else that got killed because I was alive because I'm the one that sold him out. But Tyree was suspicious of Dakota the whole time. He telling everybody Dakota did it. Dakota's the imposter. Like, y'all got to believe me. And then Dakota, while he was giving his defense, the way that he spoke, that first syllable of his sentence I waited for him to finish everything else he was going to say. I was like, you're a fucking liar. Just the way that you opened your mouth to try to speak, you lie. 
You lie. You liar. <laughs> it's like the ace attorney. Objection. Objection, your honor. That person lied. But yeah, it's just the way that he spoke. It's, I told everybody it was unfair for me, Dakota, and Tyree to be playing together. Because we know each other to the point of, like, just the way that he said the first syllable. Everything else was Dakota, to a T. But I could just tell by the way he spoke. I was like, you're lying. You're lying yes. through your teeth. See, this is the thing, is that I'm always lying. So now you'll never know when I'm telling the truth. Bruce Banner? Is that you? It is me. You're going to turn into Bruce. the Hulk? She Hulk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, kids on the slope. <laughs> kids on the slope. So the studio that made Kids on the Slope was Studio Mappa. For those who are unfamiliar, it is the same studio that made Yori on Ice, Kakigurui the second season, not the first, Zombieland Saga, which honestly, I should have made us cover this shit this month. Have you seen anything about Zombieland Saga? No, I have not. So you're going to get a kick out of the premise of the show. Okay. So it is a pop idol group that's dead. They're all zombies, but the guy who is over the group dresses them up in makeup whenever they go to perform. Right. But since they're dead and they're zombies, they obviously have problems, like limbs attempting to fall off and <laughs> everything else. Nice. So the, the whole premise of the show is them trying to be a pop idol group, but also keep their secret that they're all zombies. That's one that we'll have to do for our next music month, then. It's... It's a great time. I enjoyed it. I stopped watching it like three quarters of the way through because I feel like something else happened that just immediately stole my attention away. But watching it through, I was like, this is great. Like, it's not something I could watch week to week. Obviously, that's why my brain died, but I could totally watch it to cover for an episode of this because it was it was a good time. Yeah, no, I'm totally down to watch it. Speaking of what we are doing for months coming up, you guys are going to have to give us some ideas of what we should do for months. We have horror month coming up, sports month. We're, December is going to be a little bit different because we are covering some requests from you guys. And also we are going to be doing a uh, ranking for the end of the year. So December is a little bit different, but you guys should totally let us know of different month themes that we should do and what animes that we should cover for it within those months. Because yeah, we're still going to be releasing weekly episodes all through next year. And yeah, this, this podcast is, is not stopping anytime soon as far as Brad and I are aware. So give us some ideas. We love to hear from you guys very, very much so. And we love to hear your guys' suggestions. We've had a lot of requests. We have heard your requests to cover season two of Kaon. Kaon, yeah. That's what my brain was going for. <laughs> Thank you. It has officially been scheduled for the first week of December. Yes. So, so it has been it, heard. It will be it covered. It has been heard. It will be covered. So get excited about that. We are doing the second season of Kaon. And uh we may throw in the movie in that as well and just do the second season and the movie, depending on our schedules. Uh, I know that December is actually pretty chill for me, but I'm not sure about Brad because we I because we have different lives. So Believe it or not, Brad and I are not the same person. I don't know if you're aware of this. We're not? We're not actually the same person. God damn it, I feel like I was lied to at some point. I was lied to this whole time. Who are you? I am me. Who are you? Me. I am me. You are you. Did we just rush hour ourselves? I think we did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... Although I will say on the note of all of that, it's like outside of requests, we will try to cover stuff, new stuff that is topical yes. as we go along as well. So as is the case for November, which should be all sports month, My Hero is kind of making its comeback. Yeah. with At least with the film, with it dropping. So we're covering that the first Sunday. Everything else is being dedicated to Blue because, you yeah. know, she has to put up with my stupid shit. So, so it's a bad she can have her own it. month. She gets mm -hmm. she gets one month. I get the rest. Yeah. And we're also going to be pre-filming uh, pre filming, pre recording a lot of November stuff as well because I am still planning on going to Japan. So yeah, I have minimized my stream schedule and stuff like that to be able to prepare for when I leave. So a lot of that stuff is going to be pre-recorded. But Brad will be back and around to do all the things and keep you updated on all of the news. Tacos. <laughs> but... It's just... I was, oh yeah, more stuff by Studio Mappa just to finish making my point. Kakigurui Season 2, Doro Hidoro, and the newest anime on the list that has taken the absolute world by storm, The God of High School. Ah, 
okay, interesting. So Kids on the Slope is really set up well then. Good director, good studio. There's no wonder why I liked it. Yeah, it's made a lot of... The director has been a part of some really big, big projects, and the studio is one of the most well-known anime studios in the world, considering everything that it's been a part of. Mm -hmm. So it's no wonder that it was a good show, and the animation for most of the show was really good quality. Yeah, I have to say that I I really do. There were quite a few like subtle anime changes. I really I really enjoy that when you see that when you see that the art style changes depending on stupid little things where they take like comedic breaks or to emphasize something they'll change the art style, um, and that is consistent throughout this show as well as quite a few others. And it's one thing that I like to see in animes. See, I love to see it as well, except in the case of the OP. Of this show i actually agree on that front the op in general gets Isn't points great. docked from the actual yeah. show i agree i don't I agree. care for the music and the animation i really don't care for i am confused as to why it wasn't more jazzy as an op considering that the entire show is based on jazz music well even the more kind of acoustic o or ed mm. I felt suited the show better. I agree. Than I much the prefer OP, the OP because it was more poppy, but also, like I said, the animation just made me immediately want to skip it to begin with because the animation does not fit anything in the show at all. No, it is quite. Jarring. It was like awkwardly three D CGI animation with weird transparency. I don't know. It was really weird. Yeah, but the music I agree. itself too just it did not fit the show. At all. I 100% agree. Yeah, the the OP um, specifically is the biggest thing that I dislike about this show. Uh, it is absolutely still one of my favorites of all time, uh, but the OP, I skip every time. Yeah, like I, the as is with anything, no matter, even though this was my second time watching it and I knew going into it that I didn't much care for the OP, I still watched it through for the first episode and I was immediately reminded why I did not like it. So it got yeah. skipped every point mm -hmm. on and you all know me at this point. I'm an OP and ED fanatic, mm -hmm. but this sucked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I 100% agree. That's it. That's all the background. It's all the background. Okay, so I'm going to give a quick overview of the show. We're trying to avoid as many spoilers as I can. Then we will check on our spoiler chicken hats and get into fully discussing this episode by episode. Like I said, there is only 12 episodes, but a lot happens within those 12 episodes. And I am going to put a trigger warning out there for alcoholism and social anxiety. I think those are the two things that I, I think it... Oh, slight violence? Yeah, slight violence. I'm going to put a thing out there for childhood trauma as well. Well, just just for general childhood trauma. I cuz I I think that covers all of our bases then cuz there are several moments where things happen to children. Uh but none, none of them I can put like a specific thing on. So just general childhood trauma. And then can I take over the overview this week? If you want to, yeah, go ahead. Jazz. Da 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 da. da. <laughs> There you go. That is the whole premise of the show. That's all you need to know. Nah. Uh, yeah. So it is. It's about a new student named uh, Kaori. 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 <laughs> Kaori. <laughs> Kaori. <laughs> Who has just moved to the country to live with his aunt um, whilst his father is away at sea because he's a, he's a sailor. That's why he's at sea. And he has moved around a lot his whole life. He is kind of a military brat. He is a military brat. So he's been moving around his whole life, and because of that, he has social anxiety and doesn't really know how to interact with people very well. He happens to run into the bad boy of the school, who is Centro, and Sen, Centro, is a big fan of jazz music. The two of them team up with Kiraru on piano, and yeah, it's kind of about their relationship. It's a lot about love for someone who isn't interested in romance stuff. This is a romance. I'm not going to say that it's not. It absolutely is a romance. But it is more about just growing up, the trials and and oh, like things that you go through as a teenager, uh, finding yourself, finding who you are, finding a place in the world, figuring out what you want to do in the future, figuring out your relationships with people and your romantic interests and who you are as a person, what you enjoy, 
all of those kinds of stuff and your relationship with the adult world. That's very much what this show is about. There's also an element political protests that go on throughout this, which is really interesting. I don't think I've seen much stuff, many shows that have like real world political issues shown in the premise of the show, but this show also takes place, I think the first year it's in is 1966, and I think when the show ends it's the mid-70s, but the main show, the main part of the show is 66, 67, 68. So yeah, it takes place in the 60s, um, and so it's kind of reflecting on history and the protests and stuff that students were happening, that students were involved in during Japan and Tokyo specifically um, during the late 60s. So yeah, there's a, a lot of different elements that go into the show, and that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love it. Another reason why I absolutely love it is because I'm a massive fan of jazz music, and uh, this is a show that heavily features it. So yeah, let's chuck on our spoiler chicken hats. Chicken hat on. Chicken hat. Sound the chicken horn from this moment on. If you like jazz, go check out the show. Seriously, it's not... I don't want to say it's not as bad as I'm making it out to be, but it's really not that bad of a show. I enjoyed it, and I highly recommend checking it out. And then coming back and listening to us discuss it, because <laughs> it's it's totally worth checking out. It's... A really good show. It's just, I don't know. I felt like I had to critique it. Yeah, we are tougher on things now. A lot tougher on things now than we were when we first started this podcast. Because we've been doing it a lot longer and we notice things um, about shows that you don't notice when you're just a casual viewer. It's kind of ruined anime for us in a way. Um, I would shit all over Wise Man's Grandchild if we watched it Oh yeah, it if we watched it now. Oh yeah, 100%. <laughs> But it's a good thing that we're, we're tough on it now. I still think this holds up to me. I am very aware that it is not a perfect show, but I feel like to me the storyline and the music and things about this show are, I connect with so much on a personal level that they counteract the things that I see as negatives as the show from a technical standpoint. And because of that, I still rate it really highly in my mind. And it's still going to be one of my favorite shows of all time because I have this really strong emotional connection to the show. So going into the show, Kids on the Slope, episode one, Monin. New student Kyoru has just moved to the country to live with his aunt and uncle whilst his father is away at sea. He suffers from social anxiety from having moved so much, and his only release or feeling of relief is when he goes onto the roof of the school building because he gets really nauseous when he's around other people. So, when the class rep, so when class rep Ritsuko or Ri, uh, Riku-chan or Ri-chan, she has many different variants of her name, uh, but Ritsuko, yeah, <laughs> points him in that direction. He, uh, uh, after he gets hit with a stray baseball, he runs off and ends up only to find Centro, the school bad boy, lying across some chairs with a white sheet draped over him. And there's this really amusing moment where he takes off the white sheet and Centro reaches up his hand and he goes, you've come for me. And it's really romantic. And they change the animation, they change the animation to make it be really beautiful and soft. And they put this serene music behind it to make it look like um, something like super romantic, something you would see um, in one of the shows that Brad likes, in one of the movies Brad likes. <laughs> You would you personally see it. attacked right now. <laughs> well, wouldn't you're not isn't that wrong. the kind of thing that you'd see in like your name? Don't get me wrong, you're not wrong, but I still feel attacked. <laughs> but like that, like I could totally they could take that scene out and put it in your name, and you wouldn't even notice. Oh no! Like they they did that, and they like increased the animation on it and everything else, and I was like, "This is great!" Like it's this so is one good. of the reasons why I like the show. Like that's yeah. awesome. I it enjoy stuff like that. It's such a good little moment. And then of course, Centro is just like, "Wait, who are you?" <laughs> and it's really funny. But when Centro ends up seeing how badly the Kiru wants the roof key from three seniors, he ends up beating them all up to get it, and then he charges Kiru a uh, hundred thousand yen to get the key. However, later in the in when they're in class, Kyoru starts feeling really sick again, so he ends up just swiping the key from Centro and runs off to the roof when it starts to rain, and they end up having a long moment on the rain together, in the rain together, and that is kind of the beginnings of their friendship. Hashtag rain bromance moment. Honestly, there's so many. Th this is a strong bromance anime. Strong bromance. And you know what? I ship it. Honestly, yeah. Like, I could definitely see 
see them together uh, in a more intimate way but also i just really like their friendship because both of them are struggling with interacting with other people and then they're able to interact with other people with the, each other and they kind of fill in the gaps of their social awkwardness and it's nice to see two lads being there for each other and supportive same the social anxiety part i feel that i feel that in my bones hmm. I don't have social anxiety, funnily enough. Out of all of my different forms of anxiety, social anxiety is not one of them. Teach me your ways. I would learn how, to, or I would love to learn how to not be an awkward shit. I'm awkward as all hell. I just don't tend to get, like, nervous about it. I cringe afterwards, but, like, I don't. I'm awkward as all hell because of how socially anxious that I am. Mm. Like, it's really weird, and that really was on full display on Monday whenever I went over to Coda's house because we were watching a horror film that sucked. <clears throat> but anyway, like, they had a lot of people over that I'd had no... I had no clue who these people were. Who are And, yeah, I literally sat in the corner of the porch by myself just drinking all my huge water bottles. Just like, don't talk to me. Don't you fucking talk to me. Don't you come close to me. Fuck off. Yeah, no, it's funnily enough, because, like, I am absolutely an introvert. Being around people is very exhausting for me, but I am totally okay with being the person in social situations that is like, hey, this is my friend and this is my other friend. You should, you two should talk to each other and get to know each other. And so this isn't awkward. And like, I don't like silence, you know? So like when you're sitting around with people and, and the conversation lulls, I am very much the person to like bring up a new topic to talk about because I don't like the silent stuff, but I find it very, very draining. And I have to like hibernate for a few days afterwards. <laughs> so I'm I like wish a, I could hibernate after work. I'm like an extroverted introvert, I guess. I am an introverted extrovert. Like I want to be extroverted, but my body is like, fuck you, no. Mm. So do you regain energy by being around people? No. So you're an introvert. You're an introverted introvert that longs to be extroverted. But it's weird because I don't gain energy, like, or I don't. Like, I have the ability to break out of my shell whenever I'm around, like, people that I'm close with. Mm -hmm. Like, that gives me energy. Mm -hmm. And, like, I want to try to, you know, bring everybody together and be the center of attention and make everybody laugh. Because that's all I'm good for. Laugh! Good for nothing else. Just laugh! (laughs) Okay, Jack. (laughs) That's the first thing that came to my mind whenever you said that. And I about knocked my drink over. Oh, no. (laughs) But, uh... Top of the morning, yeah, like, I'm not even gonna attempt that. You can you can keep that for yourself. You can keep that for yourself. You can put that in your pipe and smoke it. Don't smoke, it's bad. Yeah, please don't smoke. It's not good for your lungs. Not good for your lungs. If you want to live a healthy life and be able to play tennis, don't smoke. If you don't want to cough up a lung like my granddad did, don't smoke. Could you imagine, though? Like your lung just goes bleh. bleh. <laughs> kind of what happened, though. <laughs> I wasn't born yet. <laughs> About this, my brain immediately went to, huh, I wonder how that would taste. <laughs> Tastes like lung. No. No. I, I, I never would have thought. Hey, you know how, like, in France there's a delicacy to eat cow's tongue? Are you kissing when you eat that? That sounds like an indirect kiss. Mm. Well, it's not even indirect, it's a tongue in your mouth. Anime tropes. Anyway, we need to get on with this. Yeah, continue. I'm, I'm so, cutting out a lot. They have a bromance in the rain. And when they get back, he isn't feeling well. Oh, he isn't feeling, sorry. When they get back, he isn't feeling the same social anxiousness. Because Centro is uh, able to, like, bring him out of his shell a little bit. But anyway, he starts tapping on the infirmary desk, Centro does. And soon, they share their passion for music. Centro for jazz and Kyoru for classical music. Although Centro's, like, (laughs) classical. What even is that? But yeah, Kyoru was super into classical music because it connected him to his father. Because his father used to play the piano. And of course, his father's elsewhere around the world um and so he got really into classical music so, as a way to connect to him ritsuko invites kyoru to her family's shop the next day when he asks her where he can find a classical record and whilst he was there she takes him to the basement where they have like a little just like a, a little tiny basement where they have a piano and a drum kit and a, a cello and a few other things where they have jam sessions, but it's like a, just a small room. 
And they have a piano down there. And she asks him, when she finds out that, she, that he can play, to play the piano. But Centro is also down there and he's playing the drums. Um, and he says, nah, he can't play the piano. It's only jazz down here. We only have jazz down here. So then Centro starts playing his drums. And Kiara ends up really connecting with his drums. And Centro then says, if you want to hear piano, I can play piano. And so he plays opening to a song, Monin, and, which is the title of the episode. And Kyoto goes, I can't listen to this, that's not how it's played. And he plays the whole piece perfectly well. But Centro says, that's not any good, you suck at playing the piano because there's no swing in your music. And so Kyoto gets frustrated and ends up going upstairs and buying that same jazz record for so that he can, because for some reason he just cannot get Centro's drum playing out of his head and he wants to prove him wrong, so he buys the record. And that's the first episode, that's the introduction. So, how did you feel? First episode introduced, I sat you down and I said, hey, this is one of my favourite animes of all time, you need to watch it, it's about jazz music. Do you remember what went through your mind when you first watched this first episode? Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I was I was intrigued by it, but I'm, I can fucking speak for sure. <laughs> it was... I didn't know what to expect going into it, so the first episode I was like, okay, I can, this is interesting, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But that mm -hmm. was... That was kind of it. I didn't know what to really think at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember getting really excited because of jazz music. Um, and also stuff in the 60s, you know? I, I'm a huge fan of stuff that is like retro or... You don't really see a lot of animes that are set in the 60s. It's nice to see something that's like modern... Because it's either, in my mind, it's either like Renaissance or 2000s, you know? Mm hmm it's nice to see something that's set a little bit far back, but not super far back. I don't know. I remember being super excited about this. I remember being super excited about jazz. Um, and I remember laughing at their relationship and their dynamic. And yeah, I don't know. I, I got really excited when I first started watching the first episode and I ended up binging the whole dang thing. Shock. Who would have thought? <laughs> episode two. Summertime. Kyaru! He uh, gets caught by a group of bullies and Ritsuko happens to see them dragging him away. So she runs to get Centro and uh, he cleans him up. They have a fight thing. Kyaru joins in. And anyway, they all end up back at the record shop. And this is where we're introduced to Brother Jun, who is there. He is back on break from university from Tokyo, and they end up having a jam session with Ritsuko's dad, who they call Pop, on the cello, and uh, as well as Kiaru, who actually manages to jump in and kind of impresses Brother Jun because he's only been playing jazz for two weeks. Um, and, and he's able to tell that he's been playing piano for a lot longer, but he's only actually been playing jazz for two weeks, and he's like, yeah, you're kind of all over the place, but, like, you got, you got the feel for it. You have something for jazz. And Kyaru ends up asking Ritsuko if she would like to meet up over the summer to do their homework together. She tells him to meet her by the church at 11 on Sunday, and when he gets there, he sees Ritsu and Centro both at the Sunday service, and the trio ends up hanging out, much to Hiro's dismay, because he believed that they were going to go have a date, but now he realises that she didn't interpret it that way at all when he said, hey, you want to study together over the holidays? She was like, okay, yeah, we'll study together over the holidays, hang out as friends. And he was like, I'm asking you on a date, and they had a complete miscommunication. And so he's incredibly upset that all of a sudden the Centro is with them and hang out with them and they're a trio and they're all friends. The trio is now hanging out, much to Kyoru's dismay. Da -da 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 -da. But yeah, they go on a date. And, well, not on a date, but they they go out, the three of them. And they end up going to the beach, um, even though that he was planning on taking her to the library so that they could study. But Sen was like, it's too nice a day, so we're going to go to the beach instead. So, yeah, they end up going to the beach and have a day there instead of studying. They play around, they have a good time. And after they're about to head home, Sen stops three guys from terrorizing a beautiful girl. And he instantly falls in love with her. And that's the end of the episode, is her turning around to thank him from to stopping those guys from assaulting her. And him. Oh, it's the next episode that I had to just cut off then. Well, there you go. Next episode. Someday my prince will come. Episode three. Centro manages to acquire the nerve to somewhat ask Yurika, the girl from the beach, out. After Kiaru goes over to his house to formulate a plan together on how they would go about him asking her out. So 
the four of them end up, uh, yeah, so I assume the bit that you're talking about of the cringe is actually when he went to go ask her out. Yes, yeah. and then she's like, which one of you is asking me? Yeah. And because... Cintero just points at... Keanu. His... Yes, and he's like, him. And I was like, turn off, turn off, turn off, turn off, turn off. Yeah, yeah, because Cintero is trying to get the balls to ask her out and um she is really sweet about it and Kyoto goes to like save him and is like giving her the time and date and address and that kind of stuff of where they're going to meet up and then she goes okay so just for clarification which one of you is officially asking me and Sentaro just points at Kyoto and is like him uh, and then he regrets it heavily because it it then causes a later misunderstanding but yeah it eh, cringe yeah, cringe but then, like, when you're 15, I get the cringe. She's an upperclassman as well. She's she's their senpai by one year. Senpai! Senpai! The four of them end up going on a group date, but due to a misunderstanding, Ritsuko believes that Kyoru was the one who asked her, uh, because Yuriko, when she goes along, says to Ritsuko, oh yeah, the one with the glasses was the one who actually asked me here. And so Ritsuko now believes that Kyoru has a thing for Yuriko, and Sentaro is not interested. However, she soon begins to see that Yuriko and Sentaro are hitting it off, and he is putting the moves on her. He's kind of got some smooth moves there. And uh, that is where you see Kyoru kind of... Uh, Kyoru then starts noticing that Ritsuko is like feeling really upset, and uh, then she ends up running off crying and he sees and that's when it really registers for him that she is fully head over heels for Centro. So we're in a full-on love quartet thing here. But Centro and Kyoru end up getting into a fight because of how absurdly unobservant Centro and insensitive Centro be is being towards Ritsuko. But of course he just doesn't know, so he doesn't know that he's being insensitive, but he is being really insensitive. And they but they end up making up when she forces them to be in a room together and they end up playing music together and that's kind of how they get over all of their problems is if they're fighting or something they'll start playing music and then they'll get into a rhythm again start having fun and all is kind of left in the music you know um Kyoru ends up seeing Sentaro and Yurika in a compromising position and he asks because of that he kind of like runs away to distract Ritsuko in case she happens to stumble upon it and so he asks her to listen to him play someday my prince will come she believes that it is a practice run for uh, him to then play to Yuruka, but he confesses that it's for her and that he loves her, um, even though he knows that she has eyes for Sentaro. And he's like, you don't have to respond to me right away, but I just wanted to let you know that these are my feelings. And that is the end of episode three. By this point, it feels like a lot has been like rushing and like he's developed feelings for her really quick, but it has been months because this show does take place over three years. So between each show, each episode, each episode is probably over like three months of the year. So like, it feels like that, that happened really quick. They just met each other. He just moved. Now he's in love with her. But by the time you're episode three, they're already like at summer for the school yeah, season. Like the, the show moves really fucking fast. Yeah, well, yeah, it takes place three years, takes place over 12 episodes. I felt like we were watching K-On! again. Like, that's how fast shit's taking place. Mm -hmm. Because episode four, we're already at Christmas. Um, and it's Christmas. called... Yeah, Christmas! But not for me. Soon enough, Christmas arrives, and it's Central's birthday. And the quartet have a gig at a bar that's uh, American military folk often frequent. I assume it's near the base. And so the quartet is Brother June, Centro, Kyoru, and uh, Pop, Ritsuko's dad. And so they have this gig there. And Ritsuko and Kyoru end up meeting in... Ritsuko and Kyoru end up meeting up in a music store that they where they're going to buy Centro drumsticks for his birthday. When it starts snowing. Taking advantage of the romantic atmosphere and not really thinking, he ends up kissing her, but she runs off in tears. Ouch. Centro happened to be in the vicinity nearby, but he didn't actually see what went down. Kyoru, in frustration, ends up yelling at him because he'll he's frustrated about the fact that, that Ritsuko doesn't like him. He's frustrated that Ritsuko likes Centro. He's frustrated that Centro doesn't understand that Ritsuko likes him. And he's frustrated that she never gave him an answer. And then he kissed her and she ended up running off crying. And he feels like he's just ruined everything. And it's 
very complicated feelings and he ends up taking it all out of Centro because he sees Centro with his family and he sees him have everything that he wants and he yells at him he's like you'll never understand what it's like for me because I'm not even wanted in my own home because his aunt and uncle aren't very nice to him and uh, he's been moving around his whole life he's never had a stable family he never never had a stable home because his dad's always away and his mom left when he was small and he doesn't have any siblings and Centro's there with like five siblings and the girl that he likes and he sees him having this perfect life and even though he knows that he's poor he has seems to have such a happy life compared to uh, Kyoru, who's rich but has nothing else. But Centro ends up taking Kyoru to his church and he shows him a photo album of him and Ritsuko's children. And he shows him how he is a far, half far foreigner. How he is half foreigner. And that his mother ran away in shame when he was younger and that his father, not by blood, but the man that was married to his mother, left to work elsewhere because he couldn't be around Centro. Even though he has so many younger children, he, Centro's got all of these half-siblings that stayed around, but, but yeah, uh, Centro ended up experiencing some really bad trauma in his childhood where his grandmother didn't want him around, blamed him for a lot of stuff, and ended up dying while he was right there. And his father ended up leaving and, and kind of blaming him and they have a really bad relationship and his dad never comes to see him and so it's just him with all of his siblings in the house and his dad just sends them money whenever he gets a paycheck. But the group end up playing their gig and Yurika and Ritsuko are in the audience but when a racist ass dickbag drunk says that he doesn't like to listen to black jazz and wants to listen to white music, Centro gets super frustrated and storms off stage, which, rightly so, that dude was an asshole. Very much so. Like, I know this is the 60s, so that is realistic, but I still do not like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Because so much of jazz came from the black community. Like, it's the foundation, the core, the whole soul of it. Mm -hmm. And it's so, ah, uh, give respect to the people that made the stuff. <laughs> you tell me to iron them, they get angry. Get to the, the chopper. Do that again? <laughs> get to the chopper. <laughs> just, just, just one more time to make sure the <laughs> audacity picks it up. Get to the chopper! Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I look forward to the blackmail. <laughs> yeah, uh, great. Okay. I, I uh, hope one day we get to meet Arnold. I just, I want to keep that on me, just in case. Just be like, hey, you want to hear a really bad impression of you? <laughs> yeah, just walk up to him and be like, look, I have found the greatest impression of you of all time. Blue, take it away. <laughs> get to the chopper! <laughs> <laughs> get, I just want to get on the on the Twitter now and tweet that at him. On the Twitter. Well, on my Twitter. Uh, okay. Anyways, but yeah, uh, Sentinel ends up getting super frustrated and storming off stage. Brother June, not wanting to leave everything it was, he actually, I believe he said that he worked at that bar um, while he was on break from school. And so it's kind of his work environment as well. So not wanting to leave everything off on a sour note, not wanting to ruin their chances as a quartet, not wanting to possibly lose his job for storming off stage and leaving everything the way that it was, because I know that the manager of the bar probably wouldn't be very happy with that. He steps up and he tells um, Kyoru to play something and uh, he ends up singing uh, to save the performance. And Yurika falls in love with Brother June whilst this happens. Um, and he actually is, this is the first time in the show where somebody reciprocates that other person's feelings because um, he is really interested in her spunky attitude because yeah, he was holding the door open to her to get in and he called her young lady and she was like, don't call me young lady and was giving him sass and being a, a very modern woman. And that intrigued him. So it's the first time that feelings are reciprocated within the show. Feelings get reciprocated in the show? They do. Nani? Nani? <laughs> Episode five. Lullaby of Birdland. Kyoru is having a hard time because he made Rizuku cry, so he goes to get some fresh air outside of the record shop. And there he bumps into one of the one of Centro's younger half siblings, and they end up playing a game. Um, to where Kyoru mentions that he thinks that Rizuku will never forgive him. She ends up overhearing because they're talking there through the cups on a cans on a string thing, you know? You take two cans, you drill mm -hmm. a hole in the bottom of your tie a string, and it's like a phone, that thing. 
That's what they does do. Does that actually work? It does, yeah. I tried it when I was little. But here's the thing. Typically, whenever you do it, you're within earshot of Mm-mm. one another. Nah, the vibrations of your voice travel down the string and get projected out of the thing. It's science. Until this actually happens to me, I don't believe it. It's true! It works! I don't believe it until it happens to me. How do you think microphones capture sound? Through vibra- vib- vibrations. Vibra- vibrations. Don't you Dr. Stone me. Vibrations. D- what was that accent? Vibrations. Baka. Vibrations. Sweet doggy, I'm Sweet you dog, vibrations. Here's them vibrations. I'll tell you about them vibrations one of these days, oh boy. I'll tell you about one of these, the, the gosh darn I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Hey, uh, don't make me say the word, because I'll say it. I'll say, gosh darn it, I'll say it. Vibrations. Say what? Vibrations. Good vibrations? Talking about the good vibrations. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ritsuko ends up overhearing Centro confessing that he thinks that uh, not Centro, sorry, the Kyoru, uh, confessing that he thinks that she's never going to forgive him and that he's really sad and he feels like he he regrets it. And she overhears this and tells him that she can't stay mad at him, but um, she has feelings for someone else and that um, and and she is officially turning him down. Centro happens to overhear this part of the conversation and now really wants to know who it is that she's crushing on. When he goes to cheer up Kyoru, uh, he uh, overhears a conversation with Kyoru and his father that says um, about an old housekeeper that bumped into his mother um, and managed to get her address in Tokyo um, because Kyoru hasn't seen his mother since he's very small. Kyoru uh, doesn't want to go at first, but Sentra ends up persuading him to go, saying that he's going to regret it if he doesn't. And so he decides that he's going to go and he'll take a couple days away, it'll give him some time to clear his head from the whole situation with Ritsuko and um, he'll be able to like, to take a bit of a break. But by the time he gets on the train he sees that Sentaro is already there and one of their classmates is actually, uh, who was really big into trains and stuff, managed to get him a ticket on the train. And uh, the two of them actually plan on crashing at June's apartment uh, when they get there because of course he's a college student stays in, uh, in Tokyo and then only comes back for the holidays. But when they get there, they're told by his um, by some people that live on the same floor as him that he hasn't actually been home in a month. And there are rumours that he's been caught up in some kind of rebelli- like rebel uprising kind of stuff. But it could also just be that he's shacked up with a girl for a month. Kyoru also notices that Yuruka has been writing letters to him and they're stuffed in the mailbox but haven't actually been pushed through. So he distracts Centro that Centro doesn't see them because he knows that Centro obviously has a crush on Yuruka. And she's kind of playing him a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Kyoru ends up meeting up with his mother and although she isn't anything like he pictured when they were kids, they he manages to form some kind of connection with her and he's able to kind of let go of the whole situation with Ritsuko a little bit and and like deal with it he's able to handle his feelings what did you think about this episode and seeing Kyoru's mom it was for me it was interesting because it felt like we were finally getting some of the back pieces of character development that Mm -hmm. the show desperately needed Mm -hmm. agreed because like here's all these characters that have absolutely fuck all for a background and now we're finally starting to slowly piece it together and Mm -hmm. especially our main character Mm -hmm. that's like dad's a sailor bye yeah so it was definitely needed Mm -hmm. to say the least Mm -hmm. i agree i agree i really liked the i i was surprised when i first watched it i remember being surprised at the development of the political element to this show i wasn't expecting there to be the the rebel protests riot situation going on that happens throughout the show Mm -hmm. i think it was a good touch i really enjoy it because that's kind of a lot of a lot of music is about that kind of stuff A a lot of music has meaning that's why it's created. It's it's what you see in a lot of rap music. It's what you see in a lot of jazz music. It's what you see in um, a lot of different types of music where people are expressing the situation that they're in, the anger of the situation that they're in, the their frustrations in the world, and they make political statements through their music. And so it was really nice to see that reflected in the actual world around them, as well as just in the music that they're using to tell the story of the show. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Mm-hmm. 
Episode six, you don't know what love is. You don't know what love I is. I want to know what love is. I want to know what love is. Uh, <laughs> the new school year starts, so we're already on our second year. Episode six, second year. And Centauro is placed in a different class, uh, but put with a boy who is friends with Yurika because he's in the same art class with them. I actually didn't write his name down this entire thing. It begins with an M. I don't know. I don't remember his name, but I'm just going to call him Art Kid. Art Kid. Art Kid. And oh yeah, by the way, throughout this time, Yurika and Centro have been uh, working together in school, and the compromising permission uh, position that Kyo, uh, Kyo, uh, Kyoru saw earlier was Yurika actually painting Centro, but of course he just saw Centro and her really close together with his shirt off. But yeah, it's actually just that she was using him as a model for one of his paintings because she's in art. She's in art? She's or in... she's into doing art? <sighs> you had to get technical with me, didn't you? Uh, but I anyway, <laughs> because of the fact that she used him as a model, Yurika wants to take Centaro out on a date as a thank you. Um, and she wants to buy him a gift while she's out there, which is why I'm saying that she... She plays him. Like, she knows that she has feelings for June. I mean, I know that June is away and he's not responding to her letters, but she's still actively pursuing him and he, she knows how much Centaur likes her. And this is what I say about none of the characters are particularly really... Like, none of them are flawless. There are no flawless characters in this show except for maybe side characters that have no backstory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, she frustrates me. I can, I can totally feel that. Mm -hmm. But then also she doesn't know Centaur like we do. So she doesn't know all of his inner dialogue and emotions and the things that he's gone through. So it's, it, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, but she asks- You can me, too, if you watch kids on a slope. You can Ding. too. Ding! Um, <laughs> you can do it too, with can do. <laughs> That's one of the commercial jingles that I have in my head from my childhood. I can't think of any commercial jingles. Anyway, so the new school year starts. Uh, Yerika asks him out on a date, Centro as a thank you. Um, and th throughout the time they're on the date, they end up just talking about June the whole time. And But before they go on this date, Kyoru was really against it because he knows that Yurika is pursuing June. He knows that Centro is super in love with Yurika. He knows that Rizuko is super in love with Centro. And he thinks that if he can just turn Centro's perspective onto Rizuko, then Yurika and June can be a thing, Centro and Rizuko can be a thing, and he will be single. Um, but at least that way he knows that Centro won't get heartbroken because of Yurika and he knows that Rituko will be happy and that's all he wants for her at this point because he can't make her happy um, being with her himself. So he ends up confronting him about this, saying that he doesn't approve and Centro and him end up getting into a fight together. But the trio, Centro, Rituko and uh, Kyoru end up going to the beach together. Um, with all the Centro siblings as kind of like a reconnection thing because they were still arguing and and kind of getting over it and, you know, figuring their own emotions out together. But they end up all going to the beach together with all of the kids. And while they're there, they end up bumping into Art Kid again, who has been trying to recruit Centro into his rock band because he needs a drummer. Centro ends up agreeing to perform with him for the school festival and Kyoru ends up feeling really abandoned and hurt because he's not good with people in social situations and he's never really had a friend before because of the fact that he's moved all the time and he doesn't really know how to interact with people and Centro is the first one who's been able to like connect with him and now he feels like he's being abandoned and um, replaced and so he takes it all out on Centro and they end up getting into another fight again um and it's just kind of like the one thing after another after another is has really been topping up on these guys as a relationship and they're really batting heads right now so sad the bromance all Aww. about the bromance don't wanna be um <laughs> <laughs> but anyway episode seven now the time i think that's what I wrote there. Now it is time for the time. It is time to dance. Oh, I want to dance. But I don't know how to dance. Body. Shake it to the left. Shake it to the right. Now shake it to the right. real smooth. One half this time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, so Centro and Kyoru are still arguing. And Ritsuko's father tells Centro that um, Yuruka is in the record shop. So Centro goes to invite her to listen to a record 
um, down in the basement. Uh, and he um, ends up putting some moves on her. And just as they're about to kiss, Brother June interrupts them from the bottom of the stairs. And he has been drinking. And Ritsuku's father believes that he has been through some kind of breakdown. And he's been... Um, disowned by his family and he dropped out of university and he's gone through all this stuff and he's gone through this this big breakdown and uh he ends up being really like a big dick to centro and brother june is like his idol his his big brother it's it's his the one person that centro had to look up to because he didn't have a dad and didn't have any older siblings or anything so june was his his stable his stable person and june ends up being a dick dick Big dick. Big dick. But things end up escalating because of the things that Brother June says, and he pushes Centro, and Centro ends up punching him. Kyoru ends up finding out from Rizuka at school and tries to make up with Centro. However, he's been selected for the festival committee and is super busy, and so life just keeps going. Centro is practicing with the band, and soon the festival approaches, with the two of them not having made up and have barely spoken within the past couple of months. During the rock show, however, something goes wrong with the amps and the band stops has to stop playing because they can't play without any electricity. And so some of the seniors start hackling the group and Centro ends up standing up to them. He explains that um, his bandmate, Art Kid, um, was the reason why he joined uh, because his, his friend, uh, the Art Kid, had his family to look after and he's trying to figure out a way to get money and he's not really good at anything else the only thing he's good at is music and so he wants to prove himself and prove that he can take care of his family and the way that he's going to do that is through music and so he has all these big dreams and that's the reason why centro decided to help him with this concert and even though it's a one-time deal and he also says they invite him then to continue on and and say you should be part of our band big permanently he says i'm sorry i can't do a one-time thing because i'm keeping my partner waiting kioru who was backstage with his flashlight trying to find um, where what was going wrong with the cables, ends up overhearing this conversation and decides to step in to stop people from leaving the auditorium. So he goes to the piano and starts to play, and it doesn't take long before Centro decides to join in with his drum set, and soon the auditorium is buzzing. This is my favourite moment of the anime. This is my favourite episode of the anime. This scene where they play together in the auditorium is the peak of the anime, in my opinion. I'm intrigued by this because I figure the ending play together would be your, like, peak for the show. Really? Um, I... <laughs> yeah, no, for some reason... Because this... it's, like, a really nice reconciliation bit. It is a really nice reconciliation thing. I think, personally, I prefer piano over organs, so maybe that's why. But... I, uh, but I, who doesn't like organs? I want to eat your pancreas. Would be very <laughs> disappointed with this. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I think I, this, this moment here for me, I think it's also because it's the first time that Centro gets any kind of recognition as being a nice person because he's always been in fights up to this point. All of his classmates are scared of him from when he was very young. Nobody likes him except for Ritsuko and uh, Centro and now his bandmates. But even then, it takes until just before this performance for a couple of his bandmates to even recognize that he's a nice person and acknowledge that he's a nice person. So this moment is kind of him getting getting to show everybody that he is more than just a thug. Yeah. Hashtag not a thug. Hashtag not a thug. Um, and of course, it's also a moment for Kyoto because um, up until this point, everybody found him really unapproachable and... Uh, he's because he's like top of the grades in classes he doesn't really talk to anyone because of his social anxiety he's kind of keeps himself in his shell and it's kind of this moment as well that people see another side of him it's a huge moment of blossoming as people buttercup mm. no no powerpuff girls no okay did you use to... <laughs> no no did you use to take buttercups and put them under your chin to see if you like butter what <laughs> is that just an english thing Yes. Okay, so have you seen a buttercup, like the flowers? Yes. Okay, so if you pick them, if you pick them and hold them under your chin, they reflect the light. And if it reflects on your chin and it glows yellow, your chin glows yellow, you like butter. If it doesn't, what? you don't. I don't know. This is just a childhood thing that I did when I was little. It's just a one of those little superstitions. Nani. Yeah. I am intrigued by this. You have to try it. You have to find a buttercup and see if it reflects yellow under your chin. And if it does, you like butter. <laughs> but as a cook, 
I know I love butter. Yeah, but you don't know officially until you try it with a buttercup. Here's a, a, a hint. It always reflects yellow. <laughs> it always reflects yellow unless you're in a dark room. <laughs> <laughs> the, the leaves are really reflective, so yeah, and the leaves, the petals are really reflective, so it shines yellow on your chin. Shines bright like a diamond? It does shine bright like a diamond. Yeah, I know. That's a weird superstition thing that you made me think of. Ta-ha! Big brain. Ta-ha! Episode 8. These foolish things. The boys have ended up becoming really popular in school since the festival, and it's kind of making Ritsuka realize that maybe she has more feelings for Hyori than she initially thought, which is... Jeez, girl. Uh, Take your shit out. <laughs> right? Um, so when a classmate talks to her about knitting something for a crush, she gets the idea to do something for him as well. Centro learns that Yuruka is getting reprimanded at school and is behaving really strangely. So he goes to confront Brother June about it. But Yuruka and June um, have been re getting really close despite his best efforts at pushing her away to the point of being a huge dick. Um, and uh, we also then discover that the reason why he's acting like a huge dick and the reason for his breakdown was because of trauma that happened during the student protest turned riots where one of his friends was gravely injured to the point of not being able to play music anymore and he ended up kind of betraying everyone in the riots because he's this huge like activist he was doing the speeches that kind of stuff and um, after that happened he just walked away he still believes in those things he just can't be a part of it anymore and all the people that he used to that used to support him and follow him now kind of see him as a traitor um yurika mulans her hair in this episode and yeah but anyway centro is feeling really upset about what transpired um and so he ends up meeting up with uh kyoru but kyoru takes him to tells him that he can't see what's around him and um, he needs to open his eyes because he still has someone that loves him however Rizuko's feelings for Kyoru are rapidly developing and Centro ends up putting two and two together and now he believes that Rizuko is in love with him so now it's all confusing because Kyoru thinks that Rizuko's in love with Centro Centro thinks that Rizuko's in love with him Rizuko's actually in love with Kyoru Kyoru has been in love with her since the beginning but she has changed her mind from being in love with Centro to being in love with Kyoru now, so there is reciprocation between their feelings, but Kyoru has been greatly hurt by her before, and Centro is not in his right mind either because he still has feelings for Yuruka even though he wants to try and get over those. I don't understand what's going on! Huge mess. Huge love triangle quartet, except there's five of them. Set tet Set tap Step tap Septet. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Episode 9 Love Me or Leave Me. Ritsu and Centro end up going to their church Christmas party, and Kyoru is trying to distance himself from Ritsuko because he doesn't want to build the connection between them and he, he still finds being friends with her and being around her difficult so he goes to a different christmas party but ends up feeling really out of place and his social anxiety kicks in again because he's not into the music that they're playing he doesn't know anything about a modern pop or rock music um and he just ends up thinking about the other two the whole time afterwards he ends up bumping into rizuko outside and he sees that she has uh, got her knitting on, on her and he assumes that she's knitting something for Centro because it's nearly Christmas, Christmas again and um, it's going to be his birthday again. So she, he naturally assumed that as he like, she likes him, according to him, in his mind, she likes him, uh, that she is going to be knitting Centro a gift for his birthday. However, she is actually knitting it for him. Centro ends up apologizing to Ritsuko for not realizing her feelings, but she kind of brushes him off and says that he's glad uh, and said, says that he's wrong. He's he's not gotten his, the right idea, but she also says that she's glad that he she heard this now and not a while ago because he he apologizes to her for not understanding his feelings and he's stumbling over his words to try to find a way to turn her down. And she's like, "It's okay, it's okay. You got it. You got it wrong." Um, but she's, yeah, she's like, I'm glad you told me now and not like a couple months ago because I'd have been heartbroken. But he asks what she meant by that and she doesn't tell him, so he still doesn't know that she was in love with him since their childhood. <laughs> you, I know, I know. It's just like, if you just said, if you just said, I like your face, do you like my face? Cool, let's face battle. It would be so much easier. So it's not kissing anymore, it's face battling. Yeah. Huh. 
And it's more yeah, entertaining that way. <laughs> I mean, yes. But also, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kissing is just like, yeah. Uh. I face will press like, my however. face against your face hardly. Yes. And you will also do the same. And battle. It's more Round fun, right? One. Fight. Round one. Finish him. Okay, so Ooh, uh, funny story. That got dramatic. Wow. Okay, that went way more than kissing. <laughs> so I found something that was extremely hilarious this week. Mm-hmm. So, Monica Ray and Chris Sabat, the voice actors for Bulma and Vegeta in Dragon Ball, frequently mm -hmm. do cons together. And whenever they are doing a panel together, they like to do a segment where they call marriage counseling. Where mm -hmm. they, in the characters of Bulma and Vegeta, will give people legitimate marriage counseling on stage. <laughs> in, just, in just hilarious, funny bits. Oh, that's really fun. Well, I found the videos. Like, they randomly popped up in our suggested feed. And I lost my shit. Aww. If you want me to send them to you after this, I will. Because I think yeah, you you'll will have find to them tweet hilarious. The link. You'll because have to tweet the link I, from the I was crying. It was hilarious. Yeah, uh, if you tweet the link from the account, then people will be able to find it on our Twitter. So if you head on over there. Uh, uh, on our Twitter. Um, then uh, you'll be able to find those links to the YouTube videos as well. It's a good way. Um, yeah, it's a good But anyway, so the student protests are getting stronger and uh, are actually spreading outside of Tokyo now. Um, and a lot of them are for like nuclear protests. There's a lot of student fee protests, a lot of anti-communism protests, a lot of things like, you know, very <laughs> standard political statements, I guess. Especially for the 60s. And Yuriko has actually been set up for an arranged marriage. June is going back to Tokyo to fight the protests, but in a different way. He's going to he's gonna go with journalism, uh, which I actually think is was a really good move for him. Um, but he plans on never returning, and he knows that it's going to be dangerous for him um, to go there, and so he doesn't want her to come along. Centro refuses to see him, and Kyoru ends up slapping him because he's like, you have to go see June! Like, this, you'll never see him again. He's going to leave, and, and that's it, and you'll never see him, so you need to... You need to say goodbye. I know that you're in a rough place with him right now, but you have all of these years of history together. He's literally your big brother for years. Centro ends up initiating a challenge and the quartet kind of jam for one last time. Um, but it, it wasn't really a jam, a jam session. It was a full on battle of music between June and Centro. And June uh, ends up going to leave, but Yuriko is waiting for him at the train station. And she asks him um, to take her, uh, about taking her with him. She asks him, um about his feelings for her and he says that he he can't take her with him because it's dangerous and she has her own life and and she's safe and and she's not from his world and she thanks him for caring and just tells him and just as the train starts to leave and um, he sees her crying and pulls her aboard last second as her parents are literally running to her saying how could you walk out of an arranged marriage meeting and i'm like i would also walk out of an arranged marriage meeting same no <laughs> that's time but yeah so they they both end up on the train heading to tokyo together to start their new life tokyo mm, episode 10 in a sentimental mood Ritsuko knits Kyoru a pair of gloves and he is confused as to why she made them for him he, and not for Centro. The two, when did I write that? Nani. Talk. I just crossed the L rather than the T because I was writing quickly. That's what I wrote there. Oh, I just heard a lot of silence and I was like, blue, no, no. blue. Uh, <laughs> the two talk about um, what they want, the, the trio, sorry, talk about what they want to do in the future. And Kyoru um, knows that he wants to go into university. He's uh, in their uh, top classes. He's the best student of their year. He knows that he wants to go off to university and um, Sen, he doesn't even know if he's going to make it to the next year. Ritsuko knows that she wants to be, she wants to go to college to become a teacher. But Sen, he uh, he doesn't even know if he's going to make it to third year at this point. So uh, Kyoru ends up helping him study. Ritsuko is uh, really frustrating because she never admits her feelings and I just want her to just say it, to just tell him how she feels. Express yourself. Um, 
express express yourself sen's father is coming back home and he's feeling a whole lot of emotions about it kyaru kyaru gets oh yeah kyaru gets a fever and ends up admitting to rituko again that uh he loves her and but they don't end up actually making any progress uh he just tells her that, that he loves her when he has a fever and then <laughs> nothing else happens and she reciprocates they're about to kiss and he collapses so what he is knows progress that... in a British romance anime right anyway collapse almost kiss yes. fails fails but then the school festival is coming around the corner again and after last year's performance everyone is super hyped to see the jazz duo play again and uh kyoto is super hyped to play with sen again he's he's really looking forward to it but with the news of sen's father coming sen is He's ready to leave, so he packs up his stuff and uh, he writes Kyoru a letter. And that is the end of episode 10. Nani? Nani. Episode 11, Left Alone. Kyoru knew that Sentaro was acting strangely, so he went to his house early on in the morning and saw him attempting to leave. So they end up getting into a fight, uh, but he manages to persuade him to stay. When his father gets home, he gives Sintro a fountain pen and tells him that a child shouldn't refuse a gift from his parent. And it's uh, it's kind of like nice for him to be recognized by his not biological dad, but by the biological dad of his half siblings. Um, when his when he was previously a drunk alcoholic who kind of I don't know if he was abusive to Sen. He was definitely neglectful. Jerk. Mm. Um, but yeah, his dad's back now and sober, and um, it's nice for Sen. It's nice for him to get recognized by the man he sees as his father, because I doubt his actual father even knows that he exists. It is nice. It mm. is a wholesome family bonding, maybe? Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily go as far as wholesome, but it's healing. It's healing family bonding. Yes, not wholesome, mm. but... Getting there helpful helpful they're they're figuring it out but the boys end up getting really into the festival and they start practicing like crazy even Ritsuko gets dragged into it um and she's gonna sing for them the day of the festival and Ritsuko's dad is gonna play the cello and uh it's gonna be they're gonna have a great time together on the festival they're practicing so hard and they're so excited for it but on one evening the night before the festival kyoru ends up leaving some sheet music behind and sen decides that he's gonna catch up to him and take it to him and as he does this he ends up getting into a car accident the next day at school he's late for the festival and nobody knows where he is and then Rizuko ends up running up to kyoru and tells him that his central has been in an accident he doesn't know and she doesn't know how bad it is, so he ends up running to the hospital. And that's when he finds out at the hospital that Sen wasn't the only one on the bike, and his younger sister was also on the bike behind him, and she is in critical condition. And Sen is only minorly injured, but um, his younger sister may never wake up. So Kyoru ends up going up to the roof of the hospital and finds Sentro there, and there is the sheet being pulled off of him again that reflects back to the first episode when they first met and uh, Kuro ends up comforting Sen and allows him to cry, gives him permission to cry and grieve and, and feel anger and pain because as soon as it seems like something good is going on in Sen's life, something bad happens and destroys it all. He feels guilty, the fact that he was the one driving when his sister was injured even though it was the car's fault that crashed into his motorbike. Um, and it was the first time he ever allowed his sister on his bike as well, because he had previously said that it was too dangerous for her. And But when Kyoru ends up waking up because he falls asleep on the top of the roof, Sen is gone. And he has left his rosary behind that was his only memory of his mother. Um, and when his sister wakes weeks later, no one is there. And he is... Uh, no one has seen him. And he's he's gone. He's He's left for good. Sad. Big sad. And Big it was around sad. this point that I started to get, like, really ticked off with the show. Mm -hmm. Because, again, I get it. They're trying to portray the characters in, like, a real human way. Mm -hmm. And you would, you know, you would assume <clears throat> with Sintero being abandoned and whatnot, it just felt like a natural reaction for him, mm -hmm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. But still, I'm like, you show these characters with growth, and then... You do this shit. You do the shit that happens in the next episode as well. 
and it just like it just grinds my gears yeah yeah i I do i 100 percent get that i think the reason why i appreciate that in uh, in a different sense um i appreciate that they fall back into their old habits and into their wrong ways and their asshole parts of their personality is because old habits die hard and these two boys have gone through so much in their life that they don't know how to deal with situations healthily at all. And they try and help each other out of the situation, but a broken person can't heal another broken person. And I think it's realistic that it would be, it would come out in one way or another. And I think it's realistic for Sen to run when that's what his mother did, when that's what he was planning to do only a couple of weeks beforehand when his dad came. In his mind, that's his only way of escape. And for Hyoru, I think that he definitely pushed the boundaries a little bit further in being a dick um, because he didn't just affect himself directly. But I, I, yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. Like, I can't. I think it's just. Maybe it's just me, but it's. No, I don't think so. I think there's other. I think there's other people that would feel the same way as you. Um, in my opinion, though, I just, I mean, they're like, what, 17 at this point? Something like that. Yeah. The, but it's like, I would be able kids. to give it a pass if it was just one of them. But the fact that it's all of them, that it just all kind of falls apart at once, and there's barely any time left for reconciliation, it's just, I don't know, for me, it just, like I mm. said, it just frustrates me at the end of the day. I think this is uh, the big difference between you and I, because you remember how I always go on about the fact that I really want characters to sit in their gloom? Mm-hmm. This, they fully make you sit in the gloom in this show. Um, and and for me, that makes it something that uh, appeals to my senses, um, because I guess I am, I take a longer time to process things than other people in a certain sense, like emotions. So um, it makes sense to me that these happen over a long period of time and that emotions are affected from small things over a long period of time and they all build this way. I don't know. It, for me, it seems realistic. You see, I get that. I do. But I guess for me, it just kind of strikes me as... Uh, over the top? It's not... It felt more drug out rather than spread out, if that makes sense. I Yeah, okay. That's kind of where it kind of hits me. Like, they could have spread it out more and let the characters all sort of, you know, had their moments of backsliding, but not let's do all of them at once with huge lapses of time with the show's inconsistency of time jumping to where it's a slightly confusing timeline on top of... Oh, hey, everything just immediately comes to a screeching halt in the last episode. Like, yeah, it just, it just, it's kind of jarring for me. I can understand that. It personally wasn't for me. I like stories that are, like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like you have to pay attention to a lot of the minor details in this to understand everything that's going on and all of the, the minor things. And, and for me, that's very satisfying for my brain that I have to focus on it 100%, mm-hmm. you know? I don't know, what's I just on. felt like there wasn't enough consistency mm-hmm. with I can all of it that. for my taste. But before we get on to our final opinions, we have one more episode to discuss. All blues. So Sen, uh, having left, has really hit Kyoru hard, and he is having a really, 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 really hard time with it. Um, to the point where he is not socializing with anyone at school. He's going through the motions. He managed to pick up his grades, but uh, they dropped for a while. But he's back up to being the top. And he goes through most of uh, the third year of his school as a loner. He's not really talking to Ritsuko because she reminds him of Sen. And then eventually when Ritsuko does persuade him to go around her house for studying, he acts like a complete asshole douchebag dick wad and ends up telling her that he is going to school in tokyo after she made him promise that he wasn't going to leave too which was selfish on her part but Mm -hmm. like i understand why she did because she was feeling abandoned from sen but like that's really selfish considering that that kyoru is then feeling really guilty about having to tell her that he's going to school in tokyo despite for having having had the top grades in the school from the day he entered the school like he's worked his ass off for his grades mm-hmm. 
And yeah, she ends up feeling really abandoned. The rest of the school year passes quickly and uh, and soon enough they're, they're graduating. Um, Kyoru leaves... Kyoru ends up leaving for Tokyo, but he makes sure to tell Ritsuko how he feels one last time and apologize to her. Um, she just manages to send him off on the um, on the train platform and waves at him goodbye. And then we are left with an eight years later moment. Kyoru is now a doctor. He bumps into Yurika, who is pregnant with Jun's child, and she shows him a photo uh, where um, Sen is a priest um, at a local church, at a church somewhere. I. I don't think it is the church that they used to be at. I think it is a different church, but she's found him. Kyoru drops everything and runs to go find him. And when he does so, um, he finds his drum kit in the church and ends up playing on the organ, um, moaning the song from the first episode. And Sen smiles and says, I thought this day would come. I wasn't expecting it to be today. And then runs into the church and they have a jam session reunited after eight years and uh, end up running away laughing when Sen ends up getting in trouble from the father that is training him. The end. So what do you grade it? I grade it a nine out of ten because it's right up my alley. It's the music is great. The OP, not great. Didn't like it. Some of the animation aggravates me. For instance, <laughs> Ritsuko's hair pisses me off a lot but like yeah just that one thing aggravates me um but i really really like the storyline <clears throat> i actually didn't cry the second time watching it through i sobbed the first time watching it through second time i didn't cry i shed like i shed like a tear out the side of my eye you know but i didn't like cry first time i sobbed it wrecked me emotionally which is another reason why i think i have an emotional connection to the show i am fully biased fully aware that I'm fully biased with this particular review. This is one that I watched that I completely emotionally related to. And I, yeah, have an absolute huge bias with this one. So this is a 9 out of 10 for me, because even though this show has flaws, it has a lot of technical flaws, despite the fact that the animation is actually beautiful and the music throughout is fantastic. I forgive them all because I just love this show. So this is a 9 out of 10 for me. See, I feel like this one and Your Lie in April were the two shows where you and I both came in with biases towards the mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the biggest difference between this one and Your Lie in April is how far apart we are with kind of how our overall thoughts are with it. Your Lie in April I find incredibly draining to watch. This I don't find draining to watch, but I feel like it has the same emotional depth. I, to me, it does anyway. But Your Lane April, I find draining. It exhausts me, and because of that, I have an incredibly hard time watching it. And it actually docks points because of the fact that I, I struggle to watch it. It makes me exhausted. I need to recover after watching it. This is, is less harsh on me. See, I felt like this one was more harsh on me because whereas Your Lion April is emotionally draining, I feel like it's emotionally draining in a good way because obviously I go back and watch it every single year. Mm. Whereas this one, those last two or three episodes, it was a chore to watch those again because I knew what was coming. I knew how like how much it kind of tore me up watching it through the first time because i remember messaging you after we swapped shows the first time and just be like what the fuck did you just make me watch mm -hmm. yeah but then watching it through this time i was just like i i don't know and it wasn't like it was a chore in a bad way it was just like i knew what was coming so it didn't it effect didn't have the same much. effect that it had so therefore it's rewatchability for me docks points on it for me because it just doesn't it doesn't have the same like emotionally scarring impact i understand that so six and a half maybe leaning more towards a seven in my case without op and ed what do you rate it seven to a seven and a half okay yeah that makes sense i'm docking at a whole fucking point for that op op is so bad the ed is fine yeah i'm fine with that but ED that op fine. Fuck that OP. <laughs> yeah, no, I 100% agree. I am not down for the OP, but that jam session in the middle just freaking yeah. Now, the point that stood out to me the most in the show was whenever they're in the basement and Richon starts singing The Sound of Music. Yeah, these are a few of my favorite things. Like that. 
favorite thing. Like, that was adorable. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. And they start sharing And even watching things. it through the second time, like, that's what I look forward to the most. Mm. Watching it through this time was just that scene. Because it's a joy just to have pop up there in the middle towards the end. Yeah. It was a little light towards the end of the tunnel before mm-hmm. I knew the tunnel was going to collapse and crush my hopes and dreams. Yeah, it was needed because they'd gone through so much as a trio and they'd, specifically the boys, had gone through so much emotionally that it was, it's just a time for them to be a little bit happy and then, of course, the world collides with Mm -hmm. death. But But yeah, I I really like the show. I am very interested to read the manga. I want to know more. I want to know more. And don't get me wrong, I did enjoy it. Like, I know it realize, or it sounds like I'm sitting here dogging it. It's not that I didn't enjoy it. It's just, I feel like, with this being my second watch through of it, I needed to talk more about my bitches and moans with it. Mm-hmm. Than the stuff that I enjoyed, because I do enjoy the story. It is a very good story. It's just... I don't know, something about it, watching it through. And maybe it is because of the podcast. Maybe the podcast has turned me a little bit more cynical with how I kind of look at shows. Mm-hmm. Because I've noticed even whenever I'm watching stuff casually now, I'm sitting there trying to pick it apart. Yeah, I do I do that as well. I definitely think that the podcast has ruined casual watching of anime for the two of us. Um, but I actually don't mind that as much as I thought I would. I like being critical about stuff. I like critically thinking about stuff. And yeah, for me, this show fully absorbs my ADHD-filled brain. It keeps me fully entertained. And the music is one of my... Jazz music is one of my favorite genres of music of all time, has been since I was tiny. It's the music that I hear around the house every single day. My parents always have it on the radio. Um, I have so many jazz records that I play on my um, on my record player. It, it's nice. It was really, really satisfying and really, really nice for me to find a modern show about kids liking jazz music. Mm-hmm. And I know it's based in the 60s, so it's more common. Um, but I, I have a huge appreciation for jazz music. I have a huge appreciation for the culture that jazz music creates. Um, and surrounded by jazz music and I um, I don't know something about this show is incredibly satisfying to me and I think that's one of the things that stands out about this show as well even though it's a show that came out eight years ago it still for one holds up to some of the standards of stuff going on today but two it turned me on to a genre of music that I haven't necessarily paid a lot of attention to mm. Because I do enjoy jazz, but I never really sought it out until mm. I watched this. Yeah. And then now I'm like, I can just sit down and listen to it at any point. And whenever you play it in the background of your streams, I, for one, A, notice it and can appreciate it. But two, I can enjoy it as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it it definitely does its job of bringing a, it brings modern eyes onto a genre of music that I don't think a lot of people in our generations really pay attention to. Yeah. So I can definitely appreciate that about the show. But speaking about things that tickle our fancy, mm. I'm excited for next week. I know, you're super excited for next week. I'm excited for next week too. I've been hearing a lot about it. It's nice to, uh, gonna be able to have that satisfying moment of like, yeah, watch it. I got... I... I'm more excited about the episode just to hear your thoughts more than anything, because I'm not ready to be emotionally torn apart again. Yeah. Like, I don't... My body isn't ready. My mental state isn't ready. I'm not ready! I... However, it's... I'm excited, just, like I said, to hear your overall thoughts on it. I have a feeling that either next week or the week after will be a fresh new notebook for my notes. You coming up on the closing bits? I am, I am. I'm 170 pages in, and I feel like there's. I don't think like I don't think there's going to be an even 200. Let me count quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's ten. Ten pages double. So there's 20 pages. So there's 190. Why is there 190 pages in this notebook? That's a really odd number of pages. Right. That's super. Even though it's even, it's odd. 191, because I didn't put a number on the context, context, on the contents page. So there's 191. I don't think you'll be able to get through ReZero with that. With 20 pages? There's a lot that happens in those episodes. How many did I go through today? 
156 to 170. Yeah, I think we're going to be on a new notebook next week. You might be able to get it if that's how many you got with Kids on the Slope, because I feel like there's just about as equally an amount. But I also have a feeling that you're you're going to watch it through once and then be like, oh, shit, I forgot to take notes. Let's go back and watch it again. Mm. Because <laughs> it's, it's a lot. That's one thing I will say about it is even though I was chomping at the bit to get through it episode by episode, I... I really want to sit back and be able to binge it all for the podcast because it, I feel like it's needed because so much shit happens that I feel like my brain could only focus on what happened this week. Mm -hmm. And especially this last episode, because I know I mentioned it towards the start of the podcast, but holy fuck. Mm. Like it just keeps introducing and bringing new stuff to light and giving us more information to where it's with the in the most non-spoilery way possible how he discussed how the first season took place in the span of like three weeks mm -hmm. season two takes place in the span of like four days wow okay yeah so that's 12 whole episodes spanning four days nice that's a lot but the fact that it keeps bringing new information and it keeps building on prior premises and changing everything. I don't know. I'm going to shut up. Yeah, I'm very excited to dive into that. So you guys can be excited for that next week. Yes. And the start of Horror Month. Yes, Horror Month. So just a preview into what we have scheduled for horror month you have re-zero horror and thriller yes because mm -hmm. it really covers a lot especially and i feel like every show fits into both of those genre categories perfectly yeah i agree so what you have to look forward to re-zero season two part one we will fully intend on doing part two after the end of the winter season, whenever it picks back up. Mm -hmm. Then you have Tokyo Ghoul, Dead Man Wonderland. And also, let me iterate, it's Tokyo Ghoul Season 1. Because I, although I would love to hear Blue's thoughts on everything after Season 1, I don't want to talk about it, because that's, ugh, it's bad. <laughs> season 1, great. Everything else after that, that's a topic for another time. That's, yeah. So, season one, Tokyo Ghoul, Dead Man Wonderland. And one of my top anime for, was it 2019, 2020? I can't remember. I want to say 2019. But The Promised Neverland, season one. Mm. I am so excited for this one because it's such a fresh new concept on a fantasy world it's not necessarily an isekai because there's no reborn people but it's definitely a fantasy world horror thriller mm -hmm. but just the way that they animate fear in that show it's unlike anything i've seen in any other show I'm like excited. episode one is an immediate like hook so i'm excited i'm i would definitely look forward to hearing your thoughts on yeah, yeah. everything well, a couple more exciting things are going to be happening this month. I am finally going to be sharing some of my Night Terror stories, because you guys know that I am a Night Terror sufferer. I have them a couple of times, uh, probably about once a month, once every other month, maybe, I'll get a Night Terror. I am a frequent Nightmare, but Night Terrors I get uh, less frequently. But I have quite a few. I've had them since I was very, very small. I was supposed to grow out of them and just didn't. Um, and so, uh, I've mentioned them a couple of times on, on the podcast before, but we've never actually discussed them because we were saving them all for horror month. So yes, you will get to hear the stories that happen in my brain, the scary night terrors in my own head. Also, other things you can look forward to this month between Blue and I, I am coming out of my semi-retirement for streaming because mm. I greatly look forward to Spooky Month for the sole fact of horror games. Horror games galore. Yes. So And also, there will be a lot of joint horror streams between Blue and myself, not like us playing horror games together, but me absolutely scaring the shit out of her and other friends with Dead by Daylight. Yeah, yeah, maybe some other horror games as well. Brad is uh, trying to get me to do all the horror stuff, and horror is not really a genre that I am too familiar with. 
And um, because of that, I tend to have some pretty bizarre reactions to things. It's going to be a fun month. So yeah, get, get yourselves hyped for that. I also have never seen... That's not true. I have seen one or two horror animes, but very few horror animes. This is a genre that I'm stepping into pretty much blind, I guess. Pretty much blind. I don't know. I always say completely blind. I have seen Denman Wonderland before. I've seen a couple of others. Uh, but I'm not hugely familiar with this genre, and I know that uh, horror-specific animes are a massive genre of anime that people are very, um, uh, like, hot about. Like, there's a lot of discussion about it, a lot of people that have very strong opinions on it, which I love to see. I love when you get those um, really intense discussions between people that have um, really strong opinions on stuff, so long as it's all this nice conversation. But, like, I love it when you hear people be really passionate about what they talk about. And I'm excited to be a part of the community. So, um, yeah, I'm. I if you're interested in see, hearing what a noob like me has to say about horror anime, um, then open your ear holes for the coming month. I know I'm excited just mm -hmm. in general for the month of October because of everything that we have planned. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely look forward to what October has in store because. We have a lot of fun stuff planned. We have a lot of fun joint project thingies planned. Fun stories to tell. All of that fun stuff. Yeah, all that jazz. So if you want to be a part of and or watch all the stuff that takes place in Spooky Month, you can follow us on Twitch, myself at Brad Carter Gaming, and Blue at Blue Lavender on Twitch. Blue streams Monday through Saturday, except for Wednesdays, and you're Thursday. taking Thursdays off now am, as well. Yeah, I'm gonna so I'm gonna be streaming Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday for um, the foreseeable future. I have had a lot of art requests, so it's been taking up a lot of my time, which I'm very very excited about. And we are gonna be pre-recording a lot of stuff throughout October for November when I am in Japan. So I am gonna be super busy throughout October. So I decided to take Thursday as well for us to be able to record and do podcast stuff on Thursdays too. So um, yeah, I'm now gonna be streaming Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. Blue also has a Twitter and Instagram at Blue Lavender STM where she posts stream updates, art pictures, pictures. Of of her adorable dog Tilly, who also has her own Instagram at the best Tilly Bean. Yes, and if you like our Brattle Doodle Dandy over there, as he said previously, you can find him on Twitch at Brad Carter Gaming, or you can find him on uh, uh, Instagram at Brad Carter Gaming as well. He also runs our Instagram and Twitter at BNB Anime. And if you like our stuff, or you want to know what our faces look like, and you don't feel like heading over to our Instagram or our um, streams you can find us on our website along with an archive of all of our previous episodes some background information on us what we've been doing in life and some friends of the show things like that you can find out all of that information on www.bnbanime.com we also have a youtube channel where we have all of our previous archived episodes and you guys can leave us comments on there uh, directly on the episode so that we can see them and respond to them and uh, you can leave us episode requests, things that we should do in the future, possible themes for months, um, opinions on what you thought our opinions were like because obviously like we said before we are not actual critics, we are two big dumb idiots that are just talking about anime as fans of it and uh, yeah we're not critics, we have not gone to school for it, we have no idea what we're talking about so we want to hear what you guys have to say as well because um, we want to know like more opinions and hopefully that'll help us learn how to critique things better. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We want to know what you have to say as well. So hit us up in those comments down below in our YouTube videos. We always love to hear from you guys. Yeah, especially if you have insight on topics that we have absolutely no clue what the fuck we're talking about. We're just kind of rambling on about stuff. Yeah. Please enlighten us because I... As much as Blue and I love anime, there's still so much a lot that know. we have to learn. So exactly. if you have any more insider information please tell us because we are always down yeah. and i also f forward anything that the podcast get directly to blue whether it be comments suggestions etc yeah we we definitely see everything that you guys post and we love that you guys interact with us um also 
Remind me, uh, reminding you, I'm, I am, re tell me, I am reminding you about art anime. I want to know if there's an art anime out there. If any of you guys have heard of an art anime, an anime featuring art, an anime surrounded by art, I want to know about it. I am an artist, I like art, I want to watch an anime about it. So, if you have any, and if, if you haven't, okay, if you don't have any, I, maybe we should boycott a studio until they make it. I don't know, you tweet at them a million times until, <laughs> until, um, there's an art anime out there because there's should be because anime is art that anime is drawing and drawing is art you know okay so out of all the studios that we've covered so far of all the anime what studio would you want to make an anime about art because oh. i have one that immediately comes to mind okay what kyoto animation oh yeah well yeah yeah like out of any studio that i've ever seen anything come out of kyoto animation is the studio i would want to see do something about art that would be super cool so kyoto if anybody's listening although i highly doubt anyone is please i'm begging you blue is begging you make uh, this happen <laughs> yes we want an art anime but yeah i think i think that's everything yeah yeah so thank you all so much for listening blue and i greatly appreciate it next week begins spooky month and also brings about ReZero Season 2 Part 1. But so look forward to that. But until then, we'll catch y'all next week. Bye bye. Bye.